This is footage of a human egg being born. The egg puffs up like a balloon from a bed of stem cells and wiggles its way into existence. It's been an uphill battle to prove this is possible. The prevailing dogma in our field for uh, the better part of the last 50 or 60 years was that uh, young girls are given a bank account of eggs at birth that's not renewable. And as they mature and become a woman and they use those eggs up, uh, the ovaries will fail and they enter menopause. In 2004, Harvard researcher Jonathan Tilley published a controversial paper in Nature. It showed stem cells in the ovaries of adult mice could give rise to viable eggs. The backlash to the paper was fierce. Post-2004, after the Nature paper was released, uh, was probably the worst in terms of the skepticism, the controversy, the debate. I think in one or two calendar years, there were probably 30 scathing commentaries published on this work by various people claiming it to be false. Uh, made up, uh, simply not believable. Uh, we were reminded that um, humans are not big mice, only if you're in Disneyland, because it was a mouse study, and obviously we had to work very hard to try to prove this in humans. To test the results in humans, they acquired frozen ovary tissue from a colleague in Japan who treats women seeking gender reassignment. But they needed a way to fish out the stem cells from the adult eggs surrounding them in the ovary. A major breakthrough that's reported in the Nature Medicine paper is the ability to isolate these cells uh, and purify them. And the strategy that we used uh, is really in a way similar to uh, a tether being exposed on the outside of these cells. And that tether is a piece of a protein, a gene product that's expressed only by these cells. In the outer layer of the ovary are stem cells that the team suspected could create viable eggs. To purify the stem cells, they used what they knew about a protein called DDX4. In mature eggs, DDX4 is inside the cell, but in stem cells, it sticks out like a rope. When antibodies against DDX4 are added, they can come in and grab onto that rope, separating the stem cells from the egg cells. A labeling protein tags the cells to make them glow green. The green makes the stem cells traceable. Tilly's lab injected some of them into human ovary tissue and transplanted this into a live mouse. There, the green cells matured into new human eggs. And we knew that day, and the hairs are standing up on my arm, that indeed these cells existed in humans. I think probably among every other observation we've made, that has to be the most important. When the stem cells are placed into a dish containing normal ovary tissue, we can watch them mature creating the first video footage of human eggs being born. For women's reproductive health, these findings have so many ramifications. Again, if you think that for years, uh, our clinicians practiced under the assumption that that egg cell pool uh, was finite. Uh, everything that was designed clinically was designed around the idea that that egg cell pool was all they had to work with. One of the main findings of the paper in Nature Medicine is that these cells, when maintained outside the body, are more than happy to make eggs on their own. And if we can guide that process correctly, I think it opens up the chance that sometime in the future we might get to the point of actually having an unlimited source of human eggs. That a woman could come in, uh, have a small biopsy taken from her ovary for us to retrieve these cells. And once we get these cells out, we can take a hundred of them and make a million of them. If we could get to the stage of generating functional human eggs outside the body, it would rewrite, essentially, human-assisted reproduction.